Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I'm your host Justin Winter, and today we have the season opener against number 16 Georgia Tech. So obviously there's no stats on the season. We are number one in the preseason polls, just out of Penn State at number two. Washington is at number three. Texas A&M at four. Oklahoma is at number five. Alabama at six. LSU is at number seven. Washington State is at number eight right now. Auburn number nine, Nebraska number 10, UCLA is number 11, we go against them in the second game, Minnesota's 12, Cincinnati 13, Texas is number 14, Michigan State number 15, number 16 is Georgia Tech, number 17 Notre Dame, number 18 is Oregon, number 19 is Florida State, number 20 is Stanford, number 21 is Ole Miss, number 22 is Wisconsin, number 23 is Navy, Number 24 is Clemson, and number 25 is Louisville. So there's your preseason top 25. As for the Heisman watch, Tyree Nolan is the top candidate to start off his senior year. He, he got robbed last year. There's no denying it. He got robbed last year. He deserves it this year. All-Americans to start, Tyree Nolan, obviously there. If he's the front runner for Heisman, he'll be the front runner for All-American. Sausage, also first team All-American defensive end. Oh, don't forget Doug Glover, first team All-American middle linebacker. Ooh, Georgia Tech has a guy, Timothy Paulson, a cornerback. He's only a sophomore. He's a true sophomore. Jay Barber at strong safety, looking to have a good junior year here. And JoJo McIntosh at returner. I think he's one back-to-back -back returner of the year, so I'd be surprised if he wasn't a part of that. For second team, we have Spencer Johnson at the other defensive end position. Boy, our D-line is scary, including Donovan Jordan. We even have a D-tackle. Remember, we normally have only three D-linemen. So all of our D-linemen are preseason All-Americans. Our D-line is going to be scary. Recruiting, we start off trying to get Aiden Mann. He is a once-in-a-lifetime receiver, 86 overall, coming out of high school. But Nebraska is going after him, too. You might have to wait on him. Matt Collins, we're going to try and offer a scholarship. He will commit instantly. Let's go. Vincent Samuel, we're putting stuff on him. He's very good. Backup for Aiden Mann. Eric Taylor, he's a solid tight end. Mark Schneider, a guard. He would be good. We also have our eyes on Jonathan Stone, getting our D lineman of the future. And then Keith Henderson, we'll try and get him on scholarship. No, so we're going to put some points into him. I think we're going to go with about 300 points in the end on this. We have a lot of options for linemen. We're really trying to get linemen because a strong line will protect our quarterback. Keith Graves, we're going to offer him a scholarship. He doesn't come, so we're going to offer him 300 points as well. I say we offer him. We're going to put on 300 points for him. We need a solid O-line. I'd say that we have one, but it's better to build just in case. You never know when injuries might come around. And then Kale Snow, he's projected 67 overall. I don't know about that. I think he has potential. And we offer a scholarship, and he comes. We also have a punter in Blair Wilcox. So that's big. So we have three instant commits before the season ends. And then we're going to just add some more points onto these linemen to make it 400 apiece. Georgia Tech, they're a solid 90 overall, but we're at 95 overall. And we should actually be a little higher than that. Leading Georgia Tech is Tony Clement, who had nearly 1,700 yards last season. Very good, averaging about 6 yards a carry, over 120 yards a game. 13 touchdowns is pretty good, but his longest run last year was 17 yards. He's really an all-around running back. He's got a lot of skills in a lot of different places, but we've seen very scary running backs and handled them fine. At quarterback, they have Keith King. They're not a passing offense. He had 28 passes last year, 172 yards, no touchdowns, a pick. I'm guessing he was backup, probably. He's got speed, too. I mean, they need a scrambler if they're going to have a run-first attack. So, there's Keith King. And then at right outside linebacker, Greg Richardson. 47 tackles last year, 25 for loss, 52 assisted tackles, 6.5 sacks, solid year. He got two picks as well and eight pass deflections. And he's just a solid player. I think that he might cause some trouble for our offense. Welcome to Atlanta, Georgia, where we have the first game of the season between Hobart Bay as they're getting ready to take on Georgia Tech. 
And here in Atlanta, there's some pageantry going on, but we don't care about that. We care about coin tosses. No, not really. For some reason, every single first game of the year, there's some sort of tech issue. So you will see later that the scoreboard does not show when we swap between quarters. Hobart Bay is set to get the ball to start off this year, and we have kickoff in the Chick-fil-A kickoff game. And McIntosh will take this one out. As he goes out to the left, maybe has some room. No, he gets pushed out before the 25. So, Hobart Bay and Strupinski. Strupinski in his first game of his senior year, caught by McIntosh. McIntosh escapes the pressure. He gets first down. Good play by Jojo McIntosh. Didn't expect him to get out of that so well. Here's a keeper for Stupinski, and he's immediately met in the backfield. Nothing going there for Mr. Zafir the senior. Second down and 11. They're sending people deep this time as he rolls out, looks, fires deep. That one is caught by Ken Anderson. Touchdown, Hobart Bay. What a strike to start off the year. Ken Anderson, I believe he's a freshman. If not, he's a sophomore. We don't see him much, if at all. And boy, he sure comes in with a bang as Hobart Bay puts points on the board early. Takes them less than a minute and a half to get it going. And now Georgia Tech has a chance on offense to do what Hobart Bay did. It's a little play action to start for King. He will run it himself, and he breaks one, but not a second. Still gets seven yards. They gave him forward progress. Third down and three for Georgia Tech. Staying in this flex bone, it looks like, as King drops back. He finds Clement, and he drops it. Could not survive the hit. Great play, and Hobart Bay gets the ball back. All right, here's a keeper for Stupinski again. He's not met behind the line. He picks up six yards this time. Still not a monumental gain, but it's good. Now they'll throw again. Stupinski airs that one out, and it is... Caught somehow, Joseph Jacobson coming through, and it's first down and 10 inside the 15. Hobart Bay looking to get another score. Strupinski sort of gets it. Oh, how in the world? I don't know how, but he got that out. I thought he was getting sacked. Tackle comes over, picks it up right at the end. Good play. Now he'll throw again, and that one's to Tyree Nolan for a touchdown. Apparently, running is not a part of the game plan right now, but that doesn't matter because they have killed Georgia Tech so far. 14-0 halfway through the first quarter. We never see them start this hot. King looks to run, and he's sacked. Not escaping. Wow. So Georgia Tech's offense hasn't been doing so hot. Second down and 13. Clement in motion. King will not pitch it, and he loses more yards. Hobart Bay sticks Georgia Tech in a third down and 14. Good luck with this one. Jo uh, who is that? I could not read the name. King will throw again, and he's sacked by Saw Sage. The Hobart Bay defensive front is getting after them. And Georgia Tech is going to punt again. And of course, they have to kick to JoJo McIntosh. The man is a monster at return, and he will... Sort of go out to the left. He did break the tackle. And eventually he picks up a solid return. And as you can see, there are no stats telling you uh, how far the return was. That's part of our tech issues today. Strapinski rolling out here. Maybe another deep throw. Instead he runs. And he'll go out of bounds. Oh no, he won't go out of bounds. Instead he takes a massive hit. We'd rather you not, Strapinski. We like to keep our starting quarterbacks. It'd be a shame if you were to lose your senior season on injury. And he finds McIntosh again. McIntosh cannot quite make the end zone. Still a valiant effort trying to do some stutter steps. Make Georgia Tech hesitate. They'll throw again. What's new? And he finds McIntosh. There we go. Completing the touchdown. So Hobart Bay is now going to have a three score lead in the first quarter. Wow. Their offense is hot as I have ever seen. King drops back to throw, and he runs into Sausage again. The second sack for Sausage. At least, maybe that's his third. Third down and eight for Georgia Tech. King drops back to throw, 
Is he going to try and run? Yes, he will. That's not going to work. His sausage gets him from behind again. The D-line is having a day, and Hobart Bay leads 21-0 after the first quarter. Well, the second quarter begins with the first down and 10. We have the ball again, because Georgia Tech can't do anything. A little play action. Stupinski bombs that one deep. That one is caught by Jacobson. Passes the defender. Touchdown, Hobart Bay. Another deep strike. They're laying it on, and Joseph Jacobson gets his second massive catch again, just mossing them. My goodness, Hobart Bay, where did this come from? And the defender couldn't keep track of him. Couldn't figure it out, and he just runs to the end zone scot-free. Hobart Bay leads 28-0. The last time that they did something like this, they scored 100 points. Like, they actually scored 100 points. And Georgia Tech doesn't quite get a first down. They have a chance, though. One yard to go. Yellow Jackets trying to just get a yard. That's all they need for a first down. That would be a win. Motion. It's... A pitch. King gets tackled in the backfield. Oh, they tried an option and it did not work. Jacoby Jackson was a part of that swarm. Now we get the ball back up 28. Early in the second, Stupinski airs that one deep. That one is caught by Jojo McIntosh and he's free. Touchdown again. This is insanity. Where did this come from? We don't even need to get creative. Our guys are just destroying their guys. They can't play coverage deep. We just need to bomb it. Wow! Actually, the last time we played this good was against Washington State when Strupinski was a freshman and we beat them 101-35. to Except our defense is doing way better now than then as Rodgers picks up 8 yards on the screen. That's about as much as Georgia Tech could hope for, staying in this flex bone. He'll drop back to throw again. Will he run? No, he'll get sacked again! Oh my goodness, the humanity! They're taking him out one by one. Third down and seven. King to throw again. He does not complete it to Simmons. A nice diving swat. And Hobart Bay gets the ball back. How fast will we score this time? Strapinski will throw again. He rolls out again. Will he throw it again? Yes, he will. And that one is caught by Tyree Nolan. Have the running back catch a deep pass for crying out loud. He doesn't get a touchdown, but come on. Georgia Tech, get your coverage game together. Stupinski fakes the screen and fires, and that's caught by McIntosh. What in the world? What happened to Georgia? I thought that these guys were supposed to be number 16 in the nation. Are they that bad or are we that good? Seriously, this is absurd. King to throw again if he doesn't get sacked. Like I said, he gets sacked! How many sacks do we have today? What is that? Like, eight in the first half or something? Spencer Johnson, I think he ties some record. I don't know, maybe he's building off of it. Oh, you know what? I bet that was for his career sacks record. But we don't have the graphic because it's the first game of the season. That's caught by Clement! Georgia Tech! Got a first down. Yeah, they're probably going to have as many first downs as touchdowns, if not less, than we do after this game is done. King will throw again. He'll run this time, and he gets a block. And now they're downfield, and they're actually in Hobart Bay territory. Georgia Tech is actually having somewhat of a drive. Can they cap it off with some points? They'll drop back to throw on third down and eight. King fires, and that one is knocked away. Not happening and they're going for it so they will forego an opportunity at three points in favor of trying to get something more king will instead get sacked is that sausage again i think it is this is absolutely ridiculous now we get the ball again we're going to hand it off or throw it we're going to throw it stupinski Airs that one out deep. Is that McIntosh? Yes, it is. And he's gone again. Touchdown. Oh, my. Oh, what is going on? His fourth receiving touchdown of the half. My goodness. Show some mercy. Georgia Tech, I think you guys need to work on your coverage deep. Me, th me thinks that would probably be a good idea. 
Well, now they're going to try and get something going with their offense, and it's another sack. Is that Sausage? Yes, it is. His fourth sack of the game. Make that the half. I mean, this is absurd. Third down and 13. They're just trying to run clock. King airs that one deep, and it is incomplete. Cedric Allen swats it away right at the very end. So we get another shot to score, because why not? Sending cross in motion. That's Nolan on a screen. He gets it, and he does get the block. Now he has some space. Gets sort of another block. I mean, it was kind of there. But at the same time, the guy got it. And, oh, there's a clipping call. I did not see that, so we're going to get backed up. Oh, come on, Jamal. Jamal Barber gets us a loss of 25. Now second down and 25. Stupinski throwing again, because why not? Airs that one deep, and it is intercepted. And we continue to turn the ball over every single game. Just for perspective, the last time we had a game where we did not turn the ball over. Oh, wait. And then Timothy Paulson gets the interception. So we get the ball right back. For the last time that we had a game where we did not turn the ball over, that was Stupinski's freshman year against Washington. Now he's looking for someone, and that one is also intercepted. So now we have not one, but two interceptions on the day. And in that game where we did not turn the ball over, Stupinski got injured. So, yeah. King will air this one out, trying to get some points, and that one is hitting the turf and that will end the first half. It could not get more lopsided. It's 49-0 to zero at halftime. Where, oh where, should I begin? Georgia Tech, how are you number 16 in the nation? Like, actually, how? I mean, come on, you're down 49-0. You can't defend the deep ball to save your life. You're getting sacked every other play. You had one drive where you got beyond the 50 out of like, what, eight, nine? And then you proceeded to throw it away. Wow. Well, with a third down and four, let's see if they can do anything here. King drops back to throw and he will proceed to throw an incomplete pass. What a great throw. And now they're going to punt it again. That is not JoJo McIntosh back there, nor Gerald Williams. That is Jacoby Jackson in as backup punt returner. He's going to copy McIntosh's moves, and now he's got some space. Cuts inside. Can he get past a man? One and two, and he's gone. Jacoby Jackson, touchdown Hobart Bay. Why not lay it on some more? We have offensive touchdowns. We have a punt return touchdown. The only thing we don't have is a defensive touchdown because our defensive linemen keep on sacking them before they can even throw the ball so that we can intercept it. Now backups are in. Glessner looks to throw. He bombs that one deep. That's a wide open Brent Harris. Add on another freshman. Another new receiver. Another new face. And another touchdown. Oh yeah, by the way, this is the fourth quarter right now. Nothing has happened for Georgia Tech. They have completely blown this game. The game is over. That's it. 63 to nothing is your final score as our graphics continue to not show any stats. But wow. That was just insane. We could throw the ball whenever we wanted to. They could do nothing on offense. We get our second program shutout. Our second? Yeah, our second program showed out. And all I can say is, what a great start to Strapinski's senior campaign. I mean, he killed them. Absolutely demolished them. New receivers got in the game. Old receivers made their mark. Tyree Nolan had absolutely... I don't think he ran a single time. I don't know that he ran the ball a single time today. And it didn't matter, because we killed Georgia Tech anyway. I mean... I don't want to become the new Mike Leach with an air raid offense, but I mean, if it works this well, we may as well. Probably won't happen. Next week, we got a top 10 team in UCLA. But still, this is absurd. There's no way that the game should have gone this well, but it did. 
So, uh, yeah, suffice to say, we cemented our spot as the number one team. Georgia Tech should be out of the rankings after that performance. And because the stats didn't work in game, we'll show you to them. We'll show you them in the post game show. So, as it turns out, Strupinski went 15 for 21, 421 yards, seven touchdowns, two interceptions. Glessner, in his backup time, went one or went five for nine, 127 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. So not very good. On the ground, yeah, Tyree Nolan never got a carry. Greg Wilson at 28 yards. Stupinski at 23 yards. R.C. Wilson even got some time in there. He got a nine-yard run. No touchdowns, though. All of our touchdowns came through the air. And <laughs> through the air. McIntosh, seven catches, 194 yards, four touchdowns. Absolute domination. 102 yards and a touchdown for Jacobson. 69 and a touchdown for Anderson. A touchdown for Brent Harris. A touchdown for Tyree Nolan. And then we also got Jamie Ross, Victor Cross, Gordon Jenkins, and Greg Wilson all getting catches. It was insane. On the defensive end, six tackles for Jake McGee and for Saw Sage. However, four tackles for loss, all of them sacks by Saw Sage. I think he had our best ever performance on defense as far as sacks are concerned. And we got a ton of them. Just look at that. That is what? Two, I think that was 10 sacks. I think we got 10 sacks. As far as tackles are concerned for Georgia Tech, Luke Mosby, the cornerback, got the most at five. No tackles for loss, though a couple sacks, one by Todd Collins. All of this came later on because they all happened with backups in. And then you got those guys with interceptions, which made zero difference in the game. On the receiving end, Joseph Jansen had 46 yards, but Tony Clement beat him by three. 23 yards for whoever that McMillan guy is. On the ground, they had a total of, what is that, 21 yards for a run first offense, 20, yeah. And then Keith King went 14 for 27, 155 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. Yeah, he got sacked 10 times. That's not good. <laughs> we killed him. There's no other way to put it. We killed him, except in turnovers. But we killed him. We beat them in running yards, and we had 41 yards. Next week, we got UCLA, a top 10 team. Maybe they'll bring us some more competition. I'm hoping that they at least put up some fight. I hope to see you there, but until then, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.